this next video gets into objective 6.2, which is comparing unsupervised algorithms. So unsupervised classification is the kind of the opposite of supervised. So the computer does pretty much all the work. Instead of you having to create and say, this is what I expect for this particular image, this is what I expect for this, this is what I expect for this, the computer says, I'm telling you what I'm expecting. <laughs> so the the user, all they, all you need to do as the user is just say, this is how many classes that we have, and I will name them later. So, and that's it, that's all you do. So you have your classes, and then you name them after. Then um, you always use Anderson Land cover classification names, so you keep going back to that document. But the NV uses something called an ISO data, and we'll talk about ISO data versus k-means in, in a moment here. Uh, so we're looking at spectral signature similarities. So it's um, it's really like diving into the data, and it's it uses iterations to be able to get its answers. So it's, it's quite an accurate way of doing it, and, and relatively fast. The bigger the images, the slower this stuff is, right? So that's another thing to keep in mind. Some disadvantages is that we do end up with empty classes, and we do end up with some merged classes. So the <laughs> this everything gets classified. So you're like, there are 15 classes, and it says, okay, well, I'm going to make these classes, so it makes 15 classes. And you're sitting there staring at it, and you're like, I can't find five of these classes anywhere. They do not exist on my on my screen. So then you just kind of end up deleting them from the legend. Um, but why they create why it created it is a mystery. Merged classes is another issue. So for example, you can end up with water and shadow together because those are all together. Um, how do you separate them? How do you name it even, right? Because it's like, well, that's not water, that's a shadow. So merging classes means you have to like pull them apart. Sometimes you end up with two classes of the exact same thing and then you have to merge them. So there's a lot of work that comes later while you're analyzing and validating your classif classification. But this is only for unsupervised, because supervised, you're doing all that work up front. So the, um, the type of unsupervised classification that ENVY does, or it has two options, but this is the main one, is called ISO data. It stands for Iterative Self-Organization Data Analysis Technique. Uh, and it is as it, as it sounds. <laughs> so it iterates, it's self-organized organizes and analyzes and then it says okay here's your image so um, they places class centers and they just kind of places randomly like where where they think classes should be and the pixels are assigned based on the shortest distance to the center so this center class and then there's a standard deviation that it calculates and um, and then the classes are split up if there's one or more standard deviation that's greater than the user defined threshold. So there is a threshold that you can set in in Envy. I just let to tell you guys to leave it alone um, because there is a a process to actually define that. So the default is just fine for our processes for now. And then classes are merged if the distance between between them is less than the user defined threshold as well. So um, the standard deviation thresholds, there's user defined thresholds. So again, there's a, there's a process to that. The, the default is fine to keep for these. Then after it's defined that, then it runs through a second iteration with the new class centers. So it shifts around the centers based on the standard deviation. And uh, sorry, I'm gonna go back there. So it moves them around based on the distance of the, the, the distance thresholds and the standard deviations. Then if it continues to do iterations until the average center distance falls below the user defined threshold. So then that's for that particular, like all of the classes have to fall under that user defined threshold. And you need to, it, it will keep going until the average change in the center distance is less than the threshold. And then, it, and, and also or, and or, the maximum number of iterations is reached. Once it hits the maximum number, that it, it finishes and is done. It doesn't necessarily, it, it can be exclusive or for that one. 
and these ones it's like exclusive or and or and if it happens all at once so that's what it is is looking at distances between class centers and so and then looking at thresholds it takes a distance calculates standard deviation for all the pixels around it then says oh no i'm going to move the center closer to this based on this distance and then just keeps going so some of the advantages and disadvantages is the that it you don't need to know a lot of the data beforehand um, for ISO data. There's little user require effort required, and is very effective in identifying spectral classes. But it may be time consuming if the data is very unstructured. So you're waiting for all those iterations to to finish, and that the algorithm can spiral out of control if you leaving only one class if you're data is if something in your data is coming in as like a solid and so some of you may experience this okay so if you end up with only one or two classes then you need to remove some of your bands from that classification the next type of classification is known as k-means and so this one minimizes the within class variability the it, it it takes the the a function and then sums the squares of distances between the pixel and its class sensor center that it randomly assigns and then we try to minimize that that function so it does assume that the number of classes are known already so whatever you give it is it's going to meet that number of classes guaranteed um, so it's very similar in ISO data it just doesn't adjust the number of classes so it's already it's like locked in place. So you can give this a try. It, it is available in in Envy. So if you're finding that it, you know ISO data is just not working for you, you can switch to k-means. Just make sure that you are very clear about that if you do change it up. So there is some math for it. So we're looking at the 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 pixel distance to the center. So that's the dis the x value and the average, the, sorry, the center value. And then we take a mean square error, and we take that distance, and then we, it's like the sum of square distance is what actually what SS stands for, sum of square distance, that's why it's squared, you add them all up for that particular class. And then I take that sum of square distance, and I divide it by N minus the center, which is like the, num the, the number of it. This is a degrees of freedom on the bottom. And then I would assign a threshold for this, the power. And then I keep calculating through these until it both are reduced. Again, you don't do that by math or like that math by hand, but that is the mathematics behind it. Looking at distances, looking at centers, looking at um, averages all over it, and taking mean sum of square errors, which is this bottom one here. So some of the advantages and disadvantages of k-means. A lot of the advantages are the same as you would see for uh, ISO data. So the advantages reduces variability between the classes. It's relatively simple to implement, scales to large data sets, guarantees convergence, can warm start the position of the centroids. Um, it's easy, easily adapts to new examples and generalizes to classes of different shapes and sizes. The disadvantages of it, though, because there seems to be more advantages to this one than ISO data, it works best for images that classes with classes that are spherical and that have the same variance. So if you have a busy image, this is not going to work very well. Then you, you also need to choose a number of classes manually, so you need to know your image well to be able to say, yes, there are five classes, yes, there are eight classes. Uh, also, it's independent on the initial or sorry it's very dependent on the initial values so if you set a threshold and um and it it hits that threshold it's it's done so if you don't choose those initial values very well then it, it tends to be very very dependent on that then it, it class the class of another disadvantage is classifying data of various sizes and density uh it again it says so it generalizes to classes, but actually classifying that data, um, especially in density, it can be an issue. And then classifying outliers, 
can cause the means to shift so then it becomes inaccurate. And then scaling with a number of dimensions if you have all kinds of things going on in your image and it's not kind of a regular standard then you can have issues with this as well. So that's the k-means. Just um, again you don't need to memorize anything. Just your, your main focus is going to be looking at that like what is it? It's looking at variability within. It's it, it's very similar to ISO data. It just doesn't adjust the number of classes. That kind of stuff. So keep an eye this on your mind when you go to study for the exam. Next, we'll get into applications in the next video.